Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be but you don't know where to begin you have come to the right place as you listen to the bright side every day you are more and more in control of your body you are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge that is why we are here every day on the bright side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes hypertension obesity skin diseases like psoriasis eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, skin health questions, formulation questions, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, something somebody may have told you about health or medication, prescription drugs, skin health, 844-236-6010 is our number. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended, you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or brightsideben.com. You can also order, you can order products off the websites, but you can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the websites as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and I can help you build your business. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas helping build someone's business this Thursday at uh, 6.30, uh, 6.30 p.m. Westlake Bowling Lanes. We'll get you the address here later on the program because I don't have it in front of me here, but that's this Thursday, January 26th. If you're in Austin, Texas, love to see you there. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Thanks for joining us once again, talking about uh, the connective tissue. For good reason, we've been talking about the connective tissue for a long time now. 25%, 25% 25 to 30% of the body is connective tissue. If you factor in the muscles that are attached to the connective tissue, forming the so-called musculoskeletal system, you have probably 70 to 80% of the body. The rest of it is covering and nerves, four basic components of the body. You've got the connective tissue and the muscle tissue, which are wrapped together. They're wired with electricity, with, with, uh, wired with the nervous tissue, if you will. And then the whole thing is covered up with something called epithelia. But the bulk of the body is connective tissue tissue and muscle tissue and that's why we've been spending so much time talking about this. Now we're going to talk a lot about the skin and the connective tissue as it regards cellulite, as it regards acne, as it regards psoriasis and eczema, as it regards just plain old accelerated aging. The relationship between the skin and the connective tissue is well known. Connective tissue diseases like lupus and scleroderma and Sjogren's syndrome all are related to the skin. There's an intimate connection between the skin and the connective tissue in terms of connective tissue diseases. According to the Journal of Medical Aesthetics, the skin is a window on the disorders on uh, disorders of connective tissue, of which there are hundreds. The thing about all these diagnoses of the various connective tissue diseases and, and what makes them difficult to address and understand, especially by lay people, by average folks, is the fact that while all of these various connective tissue diseases purport to be s- separate illnesses, scleroderma, Sjogren's disease, lupus, vasculitis, they're not really ex- uh, separate diseases. They're all basically the same kind of breakdown. 
They're all based in the same kind of biochemical disruptions, the same kind of pathologies. And even though they have different names, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and Marfan syndrome and epidermolosis bullosa, and yeah, they got all kinds of names for these things, osteogenesis imperfecta hundreds. I got a textbook here in my hand that weighs probably 20 pounds, 25 pounds. I'm lifting it up now. I don't know, 30 pounds. Connective tissue and its heritable disorders. I'm talking, this is 2,000 pages of connective tissue diseases. And it's interesting, I have to say. All the pictures are interesting. This is You're not going to want to read this thing unless you're really serious about, uh, about medicine and chemistry. And it is kind of interesting. I like reading this sort of stuff. But as far as reversing your connective tissue diseases, you don't have to know about it. You don't have to know any of this stuff. You don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a chemist. You don't have to be a scientist. And this is not just true about diseases. This is true about accelerated aging and photo damage, just wrinkles. It's all the manifestation of the same kinds of pathologies, the same kind of bodily breakdowns that we've been talking about on the bright side now for years. You've got digestive toxicity. You've got dirty blood. You've got uh, activation of immune complexes inside the blood. And you've got deposition of such complexes in the connective tissue. And then an, sometimes an immune response against the connective tissue. Then you have autoimmune diseases. That's it. That's all of it, folks. You've got digestive breakdown. Stuff gets into the blood. The blood becomes toxic. Those toxins enter, uh, get deposited in the connective tissue. That causes a breakdown of the, of the, of the connective tissue and or an immune response. And that's it. Sugar doesn't help. Nutritional deficiencies compound the problem. Toxicity from cigarette smoke and air pollution and alcohol and prescription drugs make matters worse. Emotional and mental factors play a part as well. And this is the etiology, i.e. the cause, that's just a fancy way of saying the cause, of all degenerative disease, period. And there's not a single doctor strategy, a single prescription drug, a single surgical procedure that will make a wit's bit of difference on reversing the problem. And of course, because the connective tissue nourishes the cells, because the connective tissue electrifies the cells, because the, ox uh, the connective tissue oxygenates the cells and detoxifies the cells, once the connective tissue breaks down, you can have problems anywhere. Not just in the connective tissue, but also on the surface. We talked about uh, eczema and psoriasis. You look at the surface of the skin, and you're like, that's not connective tissue, that's the surface. Well, because the connective tissue is feeding the surface of the skin, you can have problems on the top, too. There are hundreds of connective tissue disease names. And while the medical model will tell us that there are different causes, they still give you the same medication for all of them. No matter what your connective tissue disease is, is you're still going to get a steroid drug. You're still going to get a biologic high-tech steroid drug. It's not really a steroid drug, but it's an immune suppressant, like Humira or Ambrel. You'll get pain relievers. And sometimes you get Prozac because you're so darn depressed because the doctor's not doing anything. According to WebMD, there are more than 200 disorders that affect, the, this is a quote, there are, quote, there are more than 200 disorders that affect the connective tissue. Causes and symptoms vary by the different types, unquote. Not true. To the casual observer, they may seem like different issues, but from a reversal perspective, they are generic. They're generic manifestations of connective tissue breakdown. And I don't care if you call it vasculitis or cellulitis or Marfan syndrome or arthritis. It's the same thing. And it gets worse as we age and as, as the uh, accumulated effects of digestive toxicity and nutritional deficiencies and, and, and poor living accrue. And this has to do with photo damage and wrinkles, too. It's cosmetic as well as internal. Despite the idea that there are these different diagnoses from a healing perspective, from a reversal perspective, which is all we care about. We don't care about the name. We don't care about the etiology. We care about getting better. From a reversal perspective, from a healing perspective, you want to think of all, the, all these various forms of connective tissue diseases as the same kind of breakdown, which means they require the same strategies. And this is important for anti-aging as well as for eliminating the disease state, whatever that may be. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 
Let's see here. I have the address for my little talk in Austin. Uh, Thursday, January 26, 6.30 p.m. I'll be in Austin, Texas at the Westgate Bowling Lane, uh, Westgate Lanes Bowling Alley. Uh, that's at 2701 West William Cannon in Austin, Texas. And you can call 512-444-2695 if you want more information. Love to see you out there if you're in Austin. I know i got a lot of listeners in Austin, Texas, and I love coming to Austin. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, 6.30 p.m. January 26, 2017. That's in two days. Hopefully we'll see you out there. If you're interested in checking out our Longevity products, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And of course, if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Retinol 5% Gel, made with vitamin C and lots of retinol, both critical for driving the production of connective tissue out of those connective tissue making cells, the fibroblasts, which live deep in the dermis, which live uh, way underneath the surface of the skin. That's the key to skincare, folks. That's the key to getting an effective and using an effective skincare product is you've got to be in the dermis. You've got to be able to access that lower level of the skin. That's what my true skin health products are all about, driving the production of connective tissue from the fibroblasts at the lower level of the skin. You can find out all about our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay. So the connective tissue is related to skin diseases. If you've got a skin health problem, you more than likely have a connective tissue problem, even though it doesn't appear as such. And I'm talking about everything from male pattern baldness to psoriasis to eczema to plain old wrinkles and accelerated aging. The, connect, uh, the skin is considered to be a diagnostic tool for connective tissue diseases. It's a window into the body. It's always a window into the body. There's no such thing as a skin health issue. I shouldn't say no such thing. It's rare that you have a skin health issue without having something going on underneath. You can have contact dermatitis, allergic reactions to concrete or to gluten or to nickel, but it's rare. For the most part, 99% of the time, if you are looking at a topical issue, if you're looking at a skincare issue, a skin health issue. You've got an internal problem. This is so important because we have a billion dollar industry that is based, the skincare industry, that is based on just smearing stuff on the surface of your skin that purports to be able to address skin diseases, which they cannot do. And this is why nobody's happy with their skincare. You've got to get underneath, and the connective tissue exemplifies this nature of the of the, uh, the underneath substance that appears as the surface. We have to address the inside of the body if we're going to address the skin. And by the inside of the body, I don't necessarily mean the, the, uh, the hollow part inside the body. It could be the lower levels underneath the surface of the skin. Because we have access to the skin in a way that we don't with the internal milieu, however, topical strategies can be helpful. And this, uh, this includes nutrients. This includes vitamin A, this includes vitamin C, and it even includes things like topical enzymes, topical papaya. Here's a great little tip for you. Go get some Adolph's meat tenderizer, which is just papain, papaya enzyme, and uh, add a little water in there and use it as a toner. Now, it doesn't smell all that great, but it's a great way to exfoliate. You can also use uh, vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Of course, uh, women have known for decades, and, and dermatologists have known for a long time, that you can use glycolic acid and lactic acid, so-called alpha-hydroxy acids, to disrupt the surface of the skin to stimulate the connective tissue. When you disrupt the surface of the skin, this kicks in healing systems that trigger the production of collagen and elastin and hyaluronic acid and other substances out of the connective tissue producing cells. Mechanical exfoliation does it too. A washcloth will do it too. Scrubs will do it. You can use laser to do it. You can shoot little crystals at the skin with a microderm abrasion machine to do it. Even a loofah pad can have this stimulating effect that will ultimately improve the health and resilience of the skin by up regulation. I absolutely love that word. Up regulation. That means making cells work, making cells do stuff, making cells produce more of their uh, of whatever they make. Up regulation. That is the uh, the ultimate ultimate uh, uh, source of a healthy body. Up regulation of secretions and and fibers and production of uh, whatever a cell is supposed to make. Up regulating the activity of a cell. It's all about the cell. 
upregulation of the fibroblast means more uh, means more connective tissue means more collagen means more elastin means more extracellular matrix means better electrical flow through the skin through the body Oh, by the way, osteoporosis, same thing. Osteoporosis is wrinkles of the bone. Anyway, the top of the skin, the stratum corneum, the surface of the skin where we see, where we, where we see the skin is linked to the connective tissue. And by manipulating the stratum corneum, by manipulating the surface of the skin, we can drive the production of dermal proteins and, and dermal uh, sugars that will make the skin healthier looking, that will make the skin anti-age, that will make the skin beefier and more robust. This is so cool. That means we can actually just work on the surface work on it if we know what we're doing we can work on the surface of the skin we can approach the surface of the skin we can activate the surface of the skin to activate the dermis underneath this is what an esthetician this is what you what happens when you go to an esthetician a good esthetician this is why peels are so helpful exfoliation techniques i love skin peels I remember when I was uh, starting out in the dermatological business as a compounding pharmacist, there were people who were saying, oh, you, and you still hear it, oh, you shouldn't do skin peels. That's too hard on the skin. That's too harsh on the skin. There was a doctor here in Colorado who was going around saying that stupid nonsense. Oh, you don't want to do skin peels. That's too harsh on the skin. I still hear people saying you don't want to rub the skin. You don't want to rub the skin too much because that's too much work on the skin. Not true. That's like saying you don't want to go to the gym to lift weights because it's too much work on your muscles. Doing an exfoliation pro uh, procedure or skin peel procedure periodically, once a week, once every, uh, uh, once every couple of weeks, two or three times a month, is one of the most important anti-aging strategies you could ever do for the skin. And you don't need to go to an esthetician, although typically you can get a better treatment if you go to a, a good esthetician. Effective topical strategies need to access the dermis, but we can do that by working at the surface if we know what we're doing. The dermis ultimately is where your anti-wrinkle fibers are. The dermis, and not only that, but this is where you get the, 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 the uh, robust kind of beefy look to the skin that kids have. The dermis has a lot of blood, and this is visible every time you wound yourself, every time you cut yourself. There's no blood on the surface. The surface is just basically cells and, and some moisture factors, and it's really made up of this, the very tippy top is made up of a hard protein that makes it difficult to access the dermis. That's why you gotta know what you're doing if you're formulating skincare products. That, that surface is almost like a, it's made up of something called keratin, which is like a thin fingernail, and it's very important, that surface. It keeps water out, it keeps water in. In fact, it wouldn't be far off to say that keeping water out and in is the main function of this surface, the stratum corneum surface. In the world of skincare, there's only three topical ingredients that can really activate the fibroblast. You've got vitamin C and vitamin A, which we've talked about at length, vitamin C in its fat soluble form and vitamin A in its retinol form, and then alpha hydroxy acids. Now you can also use, as I say, you can use a washcloth and you can use a loofah pad, but nothing beats alpha hydroxy acids for two reasons, or beta hydroxy acids, it might add those two, salicylic acid, if you've heard of that. Nothing beats alpha and beta hydroxy acids, not a loofah pad, not a washcloth, not microdermabrasion. I'll tell you why when we come back from our break, and then we'll take your phone calls as well, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com. We have search engines up as well at uh, pharmacistben.com and... I'm sorry, at brightsidepen.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. You can purchase Longevity products off of brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're interested in checking out our bone broth protein and cannabinoid products, you can head over to brightsidehealth.com. That's my website for various products that I think are important and hard to find, brightsidehealth.com. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. Before we went to break, I was telling you about alpha hydroxy acids and why I consider them to be the most important exfoliating or stimulating topical ingredient that you can use. Vitamin C is not 
not stimulating. Vitamin A is a little bit stimulating. Retinol, actually retinol is quite, quite stimulating, I should say. Uh, and you will get some nice peeling and exfoliating effects from retinol, uh, from my, particularly from my true 5%, uh, retinol 5% gel, which is a big old dose of retinol. Most folks will notice flaking and exfoliation within t uh, maybe two days after you apply the product. Uh, exfoliation is a good thing. You're getting rid of dead cells, but most importantly, you're stimulating the production of new connective tissue out of the fibroblasts. The reason I like alpha hydroxy acid so much is because not only do you get exfoliation, but you also drop the pH of the skin and the acid level, the pH, the acidity of the alpha hydroxy acids gives you a second benefit. So you get like a one-two punch. The exfoliation is one benefit and the drop in pH is a second benefit. The skin likes to be acid. Most skincare products are not acid. Most skincare products are alkaline. Most lotions, most soaps, most cleansers, most topical products are alkaline. The skin likes to be acidic. The skin is acidic. It needs to be acidic to do its work. Skin that is psoriatic or skin that is eczematous, that has eczema, tends to be more alkaline. So with alpha hydroxy acids, not only do you get the benefits of exfoliation, stimulating the fibroblast, but you also drop the pH of the skin. The skin will pull a pH back up to where it wants to be, but you get a temporary drop in pH. Acidity means energy. Acidity is electrical energy. Alkalinity is a sluggishness, a slowness. That's why you want the inside of your body to be slightly alkaline. You probably heard of alkalinize or dye and the pH miracle and um, healthcare practitioners talking about alkalinizing your blood and you have too much acidity. Acidity is stimulating. Inside the body, you want the blood to be slightly alkaline. It has to be slightly alkaline. And it's kept that way uh, with some serious biochemical regulation. It's very difficult for the blood to become acidic. It has to be pretty toxic for the blood to become acidic. But on the surface of the skin, you need acidity. Outside the body, you need acidity. Inside the body, you need slight alkalinity. Slight, 7.35. 7.0 is the cutoff point, and the blood is kept at 7.35, slightly alkaline. Skin pH is right around 4-ish, mm, 4.5 to 5-ish, which is slightly acidic. Most skincare products are in the 7s or 8, or in the 8s, really, 8s or 9s. Soap is like 10 or 11 on a scale of 0 to 14. That's pretty darn alkaline. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll continue talking talking about the connective tissue and the skin. I'm going to get to, uh, I'm going to talk about cellu uh, cellulite here. Probably tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about cellulite. And then I also want to talk about something called vasculitis, which is a connective, frustrating connective tissue health challenge that some folks deal with. We'll do that as we continue talking connective tissue on the bright side. 844-236. 6010 is our number. Uh, I'm going to just read one story that I, think, that I think is interesting, and then we'll get your phone calls here. Vitamin B, crucial to children's mental health, study finds. A new study has uncovered a significant link between vitamin B levels and the mental health and well-being of children and adolescents. And this is something I've been talking about, and Dr. Wallach has been talking about for years. The B complex are your brain vitamins. They're your building vitamins. They're your brain vitamins. They're important for energy. They help the body process food. They help the body turn food into energy. And sugar will deplete the body of B vitamins, particularly vitamins B1 and B3. And because the B vitamins are brain vitamins, the more sugar we eat, the easier it is to have ADD or confusion or brain health problems. And I sometimes wonder how much of our ADD epidemic is really a cereal epidemic. Or a, or, or a Pop-Tart epidemic, or an orange juice epidemic. All of these deplete the body of B vitamins. And if your kids are not replacing those B vitamins when they go off to school, it's very easy for ADD to show up, or just, just emotional problems to show up. And by the way, the B vitamins are water-soluble, so you urinate them out. So we all are dealing with, unless we're supplementing, we all are likely to be dealing with B vitamin deficiencies, whether these are clinical or subclinical. That is, whether they show up as dramatic health challenges or, or just forgetfulness or just confusion or just depression. This is why the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is such a darn effective nutritional supplement. It's liquid B vitamins. That's how you want to think of your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. One way to think of your Beyond Tangy Tangerine as liquid B vitamins. And that's why I always say it's better to sip on your Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long than it is to try to do it all at once. Because if you do all your BTT all at once, you're going to go to the bathroom a couple hours later, you're going to lose a lot of that nutritional value. But if you sip on your BTT all day long, you'll get your B vitamins, you'll get your vitamin C, you'll get your water-soluble electrolytes in a sustained release, in a functionally sustained release kind of fashion. Like an IV drip, 
of nutritional supplementation. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Brian has been holding on for a long time. Good morning, Brian in New Hampshire. How you doing? Doing okay, man. How are you today? I am good. Thanks for calling. What's up? That's good. Um, well, I've been following you for a few years. Um, okay. There's something that I called up before because I had a problem with sleep paralysis. However, this this is kind of related because I've I've been developing slowly sleep apnea for the last year and a half. Okay. I never snored. I never snored, and I probably started snoring two years ago. The snoring has has slowly progressed into okay. to be not breathing at night. When, and okay. I, that's a, she has to even leave the room at this point. So it's, it's uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a serious issue. That's much more serious than just snoring or just you know unpleasant for your spouse oh. or your partner. Yeah, that's a serious issue, especially if it's getting progressively worse. Think one word when you have sleep apnea. That's inflammation. The airways become inflamed. So this, is why, oh, this is why overweight. I'm sorry, let me just say this one last thing. This is why overweight people are, are more prone towards sleep apnea because there's a lot of fat that can develop in that area and that can block the airways. So you want to consider sleep apnea not as a problem per se, although it, it's obviously an issue, but really as a, a sign of a problem. This is always the case when it comes to our symptoms. Uh, and what it means is that something is getting into the body that's causing inflammation. It's linked to metabolic syndrome. It's linked to diabetes. It's linked to weight problems and obesity. So you want to really focus on all these three areas. Uh, 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 blood sugar issues number one inflammatory factors that are getting into the into the blood number two and then weight problems number three so uh, it's really basically the same thing that we talk about all the time except it happens to be affecting the airways uh, so really you're dealing with the same kind of health challenge everybody else is dealing with and that's why you're noticing it's getting progressively worse because you're getting with all due respect Brian you're getting progressively worse so you want to really f consider this to be symptomatic and not only that but it's a diagnostic tool so as your sleep apnea gets better as your as your start to incorporate some of the things I'm going to tell you to do here in a moment, as your sleep apnea gets better, you know you're getting better and you'll know you're reducing your risk of horrible diseases down the road and you're uh, 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 increasing your longevity. Hang on, Brian, because we'll finish up when we come back, come back from our break and I'll give you some ideas. And then if you're on hold, you too. Hang tight. We will get to all our calls. We'll try to get to all our calls in our next segment. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, and I've got a full board, so I'm going to go quick because I want to get to everybody today. Uh, Brian, anything you want to add? I'm going to I'm going to go real fast here and give you some ideas. Anything you want to add to your sleep apnea question, Brian? Uh, just the fact that I have trouble deep breathing, Brad. Okay, uh, you mean when you're not sleeping, just when you're trying to do your deep breathing techniques? So I noticed that throughout the day, well, I guess because uh, periods of stress where uh, I I breathe very shallow and. Uh, the only thing I can do to, per, like, like I, I stop breathing shallow while I'm working at a desk is yeah. exercise, and I was I was curious if that might be per, perpetuating the problem. Oh, yeah. Well, you definitely have an, an issue. You know, it's like a vicious cycle because if you can't oxygenate, that's going to increase stress and that's going to decrease your ability to oxygenate, which is going to increase stress. And you go in this downward spiral. So uh, I would if I were you, I would do everything I could do to force myself to deep breathe, to like really intentionally concentrate on deep breathing. Exercise is actually a great strategy. Uh, your body will naturally tend to deep breathe when you're working out um, at least. Uh, at least if you're focused, if you're intending to. Uh, as far as sleep apnea goes, it's associated with all kinds of problems, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, obesity. And it's hard to say whether all of these issues are causes or all of these are issues are subsequent uh, to the sleep apnea, but they're, in any case, they're, they're linked. So uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to treat yourself like a diabetic first and foremost. Now, you probably have some weight issues or you have some diabetes issues if you're like most, or blood sugar issues if you're like most sleep apnea patients and if you're like most of us anyway after the age of 35 or 40 or so so working on blood sugar is very very important treat yourself like a di di like a diabetic use the sweeties use the beyond tangy tangerine more fiber a uh, great di uh, anti-diabetic strategy is to use is to grind up flax seeds make your own little um, uh, a flaxseed pudding with with uh, unsweetened almond milk or even just straight water and start all your meals off with uh, with this kind of flaxseed solution or flaxseed pudding and that will not only fill up 
up your belly so you eat less food, but the fiber will tend to uh, uh, pull sugar out a little bit more rapidly or, or at least make the sugar less easily absorbed, sugar from your meals less easily absorbed. So that's a great anti-diabetic strategy. Starting off all your meals with vegetable juices, likewise, will do the same thing. Chromium, vanadium, selenium, all the things we talk about for, for uh, blood sugar control. Uh, if you have any weight issues, you want to lose the, lose the weight, but particularly not just the weight, but the body fat. And the best way to lose body fat is to work out to build more muscle uh, and to help your body burn the fat. You can also go the ketogenic diet is another is another effective strategy. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, the B complex can also help if you have any cardiovascular issues that are predisposing you to the to sleep apnea. And of course, that's the beyond tangy tangerine. Uh, anything else you want to add, Brian? I'm going to move on if, if not. You should. Thanks, Ben. I'll talk to you later. Okay, buddy. Thank you so much for your call, Brian. Appreciate it. Okay, let's go to Joe in Oklahoma. Good morning, Joe. How you doing? Doing fine. What's uh, going on? Yes, pardon. sir. Yes, sir. How can I help you, sir? Well, I went to the doctor and uh, had a bunch of, of uh, red blotches, not blotches. The whole back of my knees were inflamed. Okay. The whole inner thigh was inflamed. And... Uh, yeah, inflamed. You mean is. puffy, puffy, inflamed? Is that what you're saying? Well, oh, slightly, and also, but it's it that all came from the the uh, calves of my legs, and it all started like like a nerve from deep inside my calves. And the ironic hmm. thing is, both side both sides of my my both legs were involved, and okay. I kept getting these uh, itchies that would felt like nerves coming to the surface okay. and they would always be on both sides Okay, here you go. Here you go, Joe. This is a secondary problem. What you're talking about exemplifies one of the major themes of this program, is that your problem is not the problem. Your problem is a sign of the problem. So we can't approach the problem by just, we can't approach the, uh, the problem by just dealing with the symptomology because the symptomology is secondary. So let me ask you a couple questions, all right? How old are you, Joe? 68. Okay, good. So you've got to have some other kind of breakdowns happening. How's your weight? Uh, weigh about 212. And how tall are you? About 5'9". Okay, good. So that's one place you want to start working right away. Uh, it sounds like some kind of neuropathy to me, uh, what you're describing, and that's associated with blood sugar problems. And if you're like most of us, you're going to have blood sugar problems, especially at the age of 68. So treat yourself like I was talking to uh, our last caller, Brian. Treat yourself like a diabetic. Use food strategies. Uh, switch over from carbs into fat, uh, good fat, that is. You can go. That's the ketogenic diet. More protein. Start your meals off with fiber. Use the sweeties and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Everything we talk about this program in terms of treating yourself like a diabetic look for digestive health problems this can also be uh, this can also be associated with neuropathies and it can also be associated with diabetes if you have if your body's reacting to anything that's getting in through the digestive system you want to know what those foods are and you want to eliminate those foods and that involves fasting and the elimination diet I would also be using probiotics, good bacteria, uh, and, and fermented foods, as well as fiber, which helps support uh, the, for the good bacteria. Fiber acts like food for the good bacteria, vegetable juices, etc. Uh, if you have any uh, uh, any uh, uh, issues around uh, around neuro uh, around uh, uh, chronic pain kinds of things, anything like uh, back pain or joint pain or anything like that, not really, other than tendons in, the, in an ankle. Well, that's that's what I'm talking about. Those are connective okay. tissue. Pro those are connective tissue problems, and it's all it's all linked. It's all part of the the same syndrome. So, doing anything you do to build the connective tissue or to strengthen the connective tissue can help you also. Glucogel caps may be uh, helpful for you. Bone broth, bro bone broth protein. I, yes, sir. May I pass something on to you? Yes, sir. I have been a long time listener of you. Uh, you're not on our local radio station any longer, and the only time I can listen to you is when I can catch you on the internet. Okay. But. Uh, I have paid attention, and the one way the, the physician said, you know, we can give you some steroid cream to put on it, but, uh, you know, I'm, he said, quote, I look for you to come down with shingles one day. But well, it with, could with be. That, it, yeah, go ahead. With that, with that said, the one way, and I've not used any steroid creams, but the one way that I can get it to go away is to completely stay away starches and sugar. There you go. That's exactly what I'm talking starches about. And, That's sugar, the, and it yeah. will heal. 
Yeah, that's the, but that's what I was one just one little bit. Isn't that amazing? Fire. It Isn't is that amazing? Stuff. Yeah, it and sounds. That's what that was my guess is that there was a blood sugar issue there. But you almost, you know, sugars and starches can also have digest. Can also wreak havoc on your digestive tract. There's a whole, there's a whole diet called the FODMAPs they cause, diet. They cause constipation. At the, that's absolutely one of the things that can happen. I've been trying to pay attention to what you said, and you know, you're spot on on what you've been telling people. And fasting is a good thing. And as I heard a. a preacher on the TV this morning say if you can't fast one day a week try to fast at least one meal a day. That's a great idea. Who was the preacher? Who was it? Um... I'm That's all right, Joe. I, I'm going to move on here. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. But you're right. The Thank less you. we eat, Thank the longer we live. Thank you, my friend. All right, uh, Kathy, I apologize. I, I tried to get to you earlier. What's going on, Hi. Kathy? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I won't waste any time. I'll get right into it. A friend's doctor said they need to take Ensure because they need vitamin K since being put on Coumadin due, due to a blood clot while getting chemo. He's taking Tangy, has been taking Tangy the whole time. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Stop, stop, stop. Hang on a second. You're saying he was on Ensure? They, they want him to take vitamin K while he's on Coumadin? Yes. They want him to take Ensure because they say it has a good amount of vitamin K. Yeah, it also has a good amount of sugar and other crap in there. That guy now, must have stock and Ensure. And she knows. She doesn't want to take the uh, Ensure, but he's been taking the Tangy, and she notices, of course, that there's vitamin K in Tangy, but wonders what your opinion is on how to help them understand she doesn't want to have them take the Ensure for him. No, but she wants to continue that's awful stuff. The tangy. Well, and here's then also, the thing. how can he get off the Coumadin? Well, you know, Coumadin is a, is a blood thinning agent and blood clots when it's stressed. Blood clotting is a sign of dirty blood and it's a sign of bodily stress. That's why they give it to you after surgery, because after surgery, you've had a major stress. So you want to always regard blood clotting as a defensive response. Something is getting into the blood that the blood doesn't like. There's some kind of stressor on the system. The, when you think Probably about chemo. it, what's, it could have been chemo easily. So any the anytime the body thinks that its survival is at stake, it will kind of contract like a potato bug. Do you ever see those potato bugs that you poke yeah. and they curl up? That's basically what's happening when the blood's clotting. It's like a, a version of the potato blood, a potato bug curling up. And so it's what you got to do is you got to release this, reduce the stressors, most especially food stressors. Oxygen or lack of oxygen can cause clotting problems too. So making sure you're practicing your deep breathing techniques. As far as yeah. vitamin K goes, I would be using fermented foods to get vitamin K. There's two major sources of vit or two major types of vitamin K. K1, which is found in yeah. green leafy vegetables, uh, and then K2, which is uh, made by bacteria in the uh, in the gut. Making sure you're eating fermented foods is the best way to get your K2. Uh, you can also use K2 supplements. I personally take 5,000 micrograms of a K2 supplement every day. That's what I would be doing. And sure is awful, awful stuff. Uh, beyond tangy tangerine, yeah. of course, that's always going to help. And then uh, uh, niacin can also help. It's a vasodilator. It can help improve blood flow, too. Lots of Lots of really good strategies, but I would be using K2 supplements and fermented foods as well. Thanks for your call. I wish I had more time, but we are just flat out. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.